Can you hear me okay? Uh, I can hear you, Jeremy. Sorry, I was trying to share my screen. Okay, got you. And I got my other cell phone as a backup because I'm in this hotel, so it's kind of spotty. <laughs> and I ironed my shirt today, so. <laughs> you look fresh. We're here. The countdown is on. Hey, Ted. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Beth. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Hi Adam. Beth. I'm going to be on uh, off camera since I'm a passenger in the car, so, um, but I'll be able to see the screen. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks for coming while you're driving. Thanks everybody for joining us. We're gonna give it a few more minutes to let folks join us. I'm Laura Riley, the coordinator of Chicago Wilderness. But if you wanna go ahead and put your name in the chat and your organization, that would be helpful. Um, also uh, feel free to just keep yourselves on mute until we have some of our, our um, discussion areas ready to go. Thanks. And Laura, I'm looking at the uh, RSVP list. It looks like we're still waiting for a couple names. So I'll give it another minute or two before I launch into this. Perfect. In the meantime, thank you everybody for coming. I hope everybody is enjoying the weather and has good weekend plans before it gets cold again. It's too hot. <laughs> I, I agree, Doug. I don't like this warm weather, but I'll take it for now. <laughs> I'm in Atlanta, and believe it or not, it's cold and chilly and wet here. So I'm like, ugh. Yeah, it's around 80 in Massachusetts. <laughs> so pretty crazy. It's definitely weird weather. I'm up in very northern Michigan, and they have, I didn't know know of this warning, but it's called a red flag warning. And, and, and that for, I guess, people who are used to the northern woods, it means that the low humidity and high winds plus the heat, it's like a big fire threat. Yeah, we had that yesterday, uh, about two days ago in Chicago area. Oh, wow. I mean, the dew point, <clears throat> dew point yesterday was five degrees C and the temperature was 25, so. <laughs> wow. All right, I think uh, I don't wanna wait too much longer. We have some good discussions set for today and I wanna really leave space for those. Um, so thank you. Good morning, everybody for coming. My name is Ted Hafner. I am the chair of the Chicago Wilderness Alliance Climate Committee. Um, and this is our sort of quarterly big meeting that reaches out to uh, anybody that wants to come and participate. Um, 
This meeting, we are going to cover um, some announcements of work that's going on, stuff that I feel we feel that you should know about. Uh, then we're going to have a, an update on the climate action plan for nature um, with Kristen Voorhees uh, from the Field Museum, who is the project manager for that. And then uh, we're going to have the education team updates and, and some discussion there uh, because there's some energy in, in that sector. Uh, and then we'll close by the next meetings. I've put the calendar dates up uh, and then any action items that come out of this meeting. Uh, let's see, next slide, where do I go? Oh, how come this isn't going? There we go. Okay, so today we're gonna understand uh, current tools for navigating CW work plans and, uh, and project and funding opportunities. There's some new information there. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a couple uh, climate efforts that are underway that we've picked up since sort of the last quarterly meeting or advanced since the last quarterly meeting. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll have some discussion around the CAPN and uh, education. Uh, so for the announcements and updates, I'll open this up in a second, but I wanted to go over this document. Um, and this is a really helpful uh, spreadsheet that we're moving to use in Chicago wilderness across all the goal teams, right? So there are a number of tabs here. Uh, sorry, first tab is uh, this funding opportunities. We've sort of taken an inventory of all the uh, opportunities that we know of that the people have sent us or from lists that we all belong to. Um, and we've color coded these by uh, general sort of sector. So uh, general resources is red, uh, federal grants are a light blue, uh, state grants are uh, the, that sort of light green, and then municipal grants are in yellow. So this is a really helpful resource. Um, there are usually uh, links associated with this, and where we have them, we have dates posted. Um, so this is a really helpful list to, to go out and see what funding sources may apply to any projects that we're working on. Um, and then we also have this tab, which is... Uh, organized by goal team. So you can see that managing healthy landscapes has a couple ideas in there. Um, the growing with agriculture, I put one in there for them. Uh, prioritizing green infrastructure has a whole bunch. And then I have put some general descriptions in the climate section down here. And some of you that are paying attention might notice that, that there's color coordination between the goal teams in here and the little logos that we have for Chicago Wilderness goal teams. Um, so the, the idea behind this sheet is really anybody that has a project that they're interested in undertaking that fits into or under one of the goal teams mandates and goals, that should come in here and should be filled out. Um, there's sort of a, a team initiative name. We ask you to sort of put your name as the point person. You may not end up there. You may end up there, who knows? Um, and then the brief description, uh, number of acres impacted. So this I have found works for some things and not others, um, but I think that's not a problem. You can put your metric of choice in there. Uh, and then we have other things like, is this an acquisition project, which changes the game a little bit, uh, dollar matches, how much we want to request for this idea that we're working on, um, match sourcing, and then other uh, sort of informational things like, does this, uh, does this roll into 30 by 30 initiatives? Does this have uh, green vision initiatives? Is this sort of more encompassing than a goal team, which we're also finding is the case? Um, so what we're hoping is that this serves as a resource for all the project ideas for federal funding and current funding that is rolling down. Um, it's in its early days, but there is a precedent for this that was really helpful, and, and that's where we're going with this. So if anybody has project ideas that fit any of the seven goal teams, put them in here. Uh, I'm in here a couple times a week. Most goal team leaders should be in here a couple times a week. So I... I wanted to sort of roll this out since we're in the middle of, of, of rolling this out ourselves. Um, any questions on this? It's Michelle Carr at TNC. I have a question. Ted. Yeah, go ahead, um, Michelle. Just like, I, is the ultimate goal, this is fantastic, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, and 
just so I'm nesting it in my head and how I share it in, in with my team. Um, it's, it's I can't get my words out. Is the notion that we are um, creating one-stop shopping so that we can create communities around funding and around the work. So it's like, what is the meta goal of this? So that people have better access to funding or is it just um, we're counting the projects or goals? It's sort of a yes and, I believe. So it, it obviously we wanna help prioritize the work of each of the green vision initiatives but by seeing what each of partners are doing, there may be areas for that added um, collaboration or as the funding opportunities arrive, you can say, hey, we're looking at this and you're looking at this. Do we want to go in together? That's a, that's a possibility, certainly. Um, but also just when there is the opportunity that maybe things can can kind of get bundled up and rolled into some of these, these applications or, or organizations are just help to be made aware of what, what funding is existing out there. Does that make sense? Right, Ted? I, yeah. I, I, That's great. Thank you. And, and then I think there's also sort of an impact component to this to start the metrics and goals, right? Because we're asking as part of this effort to track some of that information. And, and so then I think that then can be rolled into the hub really pretty easily if the project gets realized and the funding materializes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, so any other questions on this funding sheet? I, I think given how much I've used it and how much it's been used, this is certainly a work in progress. I, I wouldn't expect it to stay static, but I would expect it to stay similar to what it is. Um, if there are no other questions, I'll go to the initiative team snapshots document. Um, and again, this is a new thing that's been rolling out in order to sort of understand and, and cohesively locate in one place all the goal teams um, work plans, ideas, and communication sort of crossover or intersectional areas. So as a, a way to navigate through this, uh, there is a slide or two that says how to use this. Um, and then it's literally every goal team has at least two, if not four or five pages on this sheet. So as a, for instance, managing healthy landscapes has done this, where some of the early adopters of this sheet. Um, so you can see if I roll down to climate, which I think is somewhere in here, um, we have sort of a summary page. I've organized all this, the projects that we're sort of working on right now. Um, and then it goes into individual deep dive sort of explanations for each of the summary projects that are listed on that first slide. Um, there are comments. This is a way for teams to sort of coordinate uh, and see what other teams are doing if you can't email somebody. Uh, and get a hold of somebody. This is an easy way to see where you might fit in or if there are opportunities to fit in with their work. Uh, so we wanted you to know that this exists too. Um, and we will put the links to both of these in the chat if they aren't already. Uh, any questions on this document? Nope. Okay. Um, and then just for your edification, we have... Uh, the cap in on this on this sheet, which we'll talk about. Um, we have activating the hub through climate mapping and analysis, which I will talk about in a moment. Um, we have the grants and policy connections work, which I've started putting those ideas in the spreadsheet. If you could put your ideas or any holes or gaps that you think are missing in the climate space, uh, that would be great. Um, the other thing we have energy around right now is this uh, Riverside, Illinois C4 climate planning initiative. I'll go into that in a second. Uh, and then the last thing um, is this small meetings with goal groups to support the initiatives. Um, I basically met with AG and uh, the JEDI group access health, uh, accessing healthy nature. Uh, in the last couple of weeks. And, and right now it's just sort of feeling each other out. We're ahead uh, and there's, they still need some more thinking. 
Um, so there are opportunities there. If you're interested in those connections, I would go to those meetings in particular. The ag group just had a meeting the other day, so they won't have one for another couple months because I think they meet every other month. And then um, the group five goal has something going on in early May that's on the schedule. Uh, so I would, I would really urge you if you're interested to go to those meetings because they're really helpful. Um, let's see, let's go back to this. Any questions on that sheet? Nope. Okay. Oh, oh boy. Sorry. Where'd I go? There we go. Okay. Um, this Riverside, Illinois, uh, C4 initiative, they have a web page. Basically what we've done is started meeting with them. Beth and Jeremy will get into some of the updates and conversations we've been having with them on the education side. There are certainly opportunities there. Um, but really what we've been trying to help uh, Riverside with is because they're a volunteer group and it's sort of run sort of through the town council, but not. Um, I've been working with the town council and the consultant, which is, um, gosh, I can't remember their name, Energy Efficiency Group. Uh, out of Gary uh, to help them sort of undertake this process. So um, really the, the big work upcoming is sometime in late May or early June, I will be organizing and performing an asset mapping workshop with them. So if you're interested in participating in that or helping run that, we would love volunteers and that is on the map. So email me please if you're interested. Um, the next uh, C4 meeting I think is in early May and I can send that out or put that in the chat once I am done with announcements. Any questions on the C4 initiative? Nope. Okay. Uh, last announcement is uh, the, the Midwest Climate Collaborative. Uh, we've talked about them a little bit in the past. This is their mission. But one of their projects that is underway right now, oh, oh sorry, is this Midwest wide climate uh, research agenda. And basically, what this is, is it's a group that meets every other Wednesday as a whole. Uh, and then the off Wednesday is just the working groups. They have six or seven tabs for research questions that they're looking at asking so that uh, researchers could then take the lead with these gaps um, and then dive into some of the questions. So there's a health tab, uh, there's a transportation tab, there's a uh, biodiversity tab, there's a community tab and one other tab that I can't remember. But basically what, what the work there is, is um, through a series of meetings and workshops, they have developed a, a list of questions those questions now get need to get refined into more specific questions that, that then could be written up and gathered in a paper to say, hey, we've done this pretty th a thorough sort of lit review with the community and this is where we're finding the gaps. Um, I'm involved in the health section of that right now. Um, I initially got ramped in through the biodiversity section with Patty Vitt. So there are opportunities to participate here if you're interested in that. Um, again, email me and I can hook you up with Abigail who is pictured in this lovely photo here on the webpage. Um, and, and that's pretty exciting stuff because they wanna roll this out sort of by June so that researchers in the next academic year can hopefully pick up some of these things as a topic and go after funding. Any questions with this? Nope. Awesome. Okay. Oh, sorry. Again. So the cafes uh, on the upcoming schedule, uh, I think we're looking at a mitigation cafe. I promised that last time and, and still have plottingly made um, minimal effort towards that, if you will, but I have made some effort and need to plan that. Um, we're looking at hopefully getting the IDNR climate plan as a cafe at some point. They have uh, finished theirs up. Their, their internal reviews, I think, are pretty much over at this point. Um, and I think they're kind of in a, a place where they're ready to sort of bring this out to the world. And I think that would be really neat for us to understand what their interests are so that maybe we can find some synergies there. 
Um, and then the last thing that is sort of big on the radar is more funding and advocacy. Um, we're still looking at cafes about how this stuff is rolling down and, and how that integrates with the funding worksheet uh, for folks that, that aren't sure how that's working. And then the work group updates I just sort of gave you um, and we'll go from there. I think any questions on this before I turn it over to Kristen? Nope. Christine. Well, it's Michelle. I have one oh, question. I please. just haven't I, I haven't been able to attend many of the cafes or any Ted, it just seems like it's one of the major I don't undertakings of the climate committee is providing that sort of high level access to um, education in this way. So I'm just curious about the uptake. Okay, so unfortunately, Michelle, you cut out sort of in the second third of your your thing, so we missed a lot of it. Could you repeat it, please? Yeah, I'm. I have it on car speaker, and so sorry. I'm just wondering, go. are these caf? I I'm loving the cafes because you know we had talked about it for a long time. Of this, a, a key area of the climate committee was bringing you know really rich information through the cafes for the Alliance members and beyond. Yep. Are these being well attended? Is there any help you need with socializing? So I think I could do a better job of that. Um, we would I love would. them to be socialized, but they are well attended. Um, for that particular, I will drop the stats in the, in the chat, but that particular cafe, I believe had 80, 99 people registered for it. Wow. And we have the recording and the materials um, posted and shared. So I can drop the links to those in the chat right now. Thank you, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, and then one more announcement on the cafes. There is a link on the website and anybody can put in a cafe idea um, yep. without even talking to us. So if there is a topic that you wanna see, maybe even if it's not flushed out or you need help flushing it out, just put the put the proposal in there and we can help you undertake it if it's something that you're struggling with. Um, all right, Kristen, you're up. Thank you. All right, can you hear me? Okay. We can. Great. Um, and I do have to acknowledge that uh, I've messed up your slides a little bit because I wasn't okay. the presentation. I'm glad that's you why did. it got like <laughs> out of order. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> Okay, so I know that we are also having an education update. Um, what should I aim for time-wise, Ted? How should we uh, I strategize? I would think if you give this 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll have 15 to 20 minutes for education as well, I think that would be good. Okay, um, I, that's what I was hoping for. So let's see how this goes. So this is the slide that you created. Can you advance to the next slide? Great, so I uh, do you want me to just operate through you? Can you just advance them for me? Okay, great. So hi, everyone. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Kristen Voorhees. Uh, I'm at the Field Museum, and I serve right now as the project manager for the revision of the Climate Action Plan for Nature for CWA. One of the um, biggest dimensions of this that I'm going to uh, address and talk about today is the tension of the right now moment and where we're going. And so I know you've heard some of this from Michelle and Doug Stotts about you know, kind of what's brought us to this point. And if you haven't, um, I'd be happy to to go into that detail later if you want to follow up. But I have here um, a slide that is kind of a, to me, the representation of where we are going to try to go, which means that, you know, in some of our plans, we are just focusing on nature. In some of our plans, we're just focusing on people. Uh, City of Chicago's got a plan. It's, it's focusing on a lot of infrastructure and humans. We really need to figure out what that that looks like from our perspective at Chicago Wilderness Alliance and use our partnerships and our um, in internal wisdom to expand on that to other regional partners. So, Climate resiliency for nature and people is a very big thing, but I, we see this project, I see this project very much as us using um, our network capacity uh, to move into this space and to brainstorm and innovate some new ideas. So to that effect, I also want to address on the next slide, Ted, that there may be, I'm just proposing, a mental model that we have for climate change that looks something like this, where we have climate change impacting 
all these different circles. Um, they're all equal in size. They're all connected. Uh, words like scientific research, environmental justice, biodiversity loss are really, really there. But the reality, I think, is that we don't really know a mental model for everybody. Yes. Thank you, Ted. The next slide. It could be like, go to the next slide. Yeah, it could be like this, where climate change is pretty big and it impacts all of us, but we may not even see how it's connected to some of the other issues we care about. Your, your circles that you're filling in might be different from my circles. Um, things like environmental justice might be your main circle or energy solutions, right? So the for this project, we have to really step back and check our assumptions about how people are interacting with climate change and really open ourselves up to imagining that in a new way. And so to that effect, I want to describe where we are right now as the next slide, <laughs> the grown zone. This is a busy figure, so I'll slow down a little bit. On the, you'll see a Y, there's Y axis that says diversity of ideas and on the X axis says time. This is an adaptation of a model from Sam Kramer's book, Facilitator's Guide to Participatory, Participatory Decision-Making. So we, I talked about the network of Chicago Wilderness Alliance. I talked about this issue as being intersectional and we don't necessarily know the mental model. What does that leave us? It leaves us in a collaborative process where we identified a problem, climate change and wanting to create a new approach to it, but we have divergent views and there are some early conclusions we're gonna come to. We're gonna try to push ourselves forward. But frankly, we right now are in this middle zone that has been labeled the grown zone by Sam Craner, uh, Kaner and others. It is a space of emergent ideas. This is the space where we stop re rehearsing the things we all just kind of already know what first comes to top of mind. And we allow for the emergence of new ideas because we're sitting in this uncomfortable space, not allowing ourselves to converge too early on a conclusion, those early conclusions on the left there. And if we allow ourselves this grown zone, we can move into a convergent space, especially that includes both those orange and those blue dots to a solution that is different and maybe optimized. I put this up front because I'm going to show you guys some of the early conclusions that we have as part of the framing of the project. But if you haven't experienced already, there is definitely some gray looseness around how we're doing this and what exactly, and that may be uncomfortable for many. And so um, I want to put this up front as that's where we are. We're sitting in this in this grown zone with some loose framework, looking to get input and looking to really try to stay open for how Chicago Builders Alliance and our regional uh, partners in this area can, can come at this strategy for climate resilience for people and for nature. So the next slide is, a, we've identified this as our kind of framework, our process, and we being the institutions that are on the coordinating core team, and there'll be more about this later, but it doesn't mean that that's a closed core team. It doesn't mean that those are the only leads of the project. Those of us who are trying to coordinate this effort and start it off, kick it off, have come up with this framework. We want to co-create an inclusive climate resource to accelerate impact, impactful nature-based solutions for nature and people. So we do think a lot of these problems in those different circles can overlap with our ideas of nature-based solutions and our hopes and wishes for our nature goals or even our people goals, right? But this co-creation and this inclusive resource is a really challenging thing because it involves a lot of voices. It involves that divergence. And it is not something that I think we have a, a strong repetitive model for. I, I believe there have definitely been efforts and I believe there are definitely people who probably have institutional wisdom here to share, but um, we're holding this out front and center. And uh, then we're gonna have a couple of different buckets of objectives. So the next slide shows, yeah, so this is, this is a repeat, sorry. This is a co-creation. And what we imagine is that there's some things here. There's some timelines that we have to manage ongoing. There's some different stakeholder groups, little people there. So you'll see this format going forward when I talk about our objectives that we think is, you know, Chicago Wilderness Partners initiatives, but also community-based organizations and Native American tribal leaders and others. So this is ongoing throughout this process that we're going to be trying to hold ourselves accountable to this approach. And we are inviting you to jump into the messiness of it with us at some point. So the next slide is our first objective, which is the first loose bin. Uh, we want to update CAP and to deliver the latest information on the projected impacts of climate change to nature and people in the region. What does this look like? Well, we know that there there's a lot of science that has gotten more sophisticated, but fundamentally is very similar. This looks like, what are we seeing it for our, for our own experience? Who, how are our partners experiencing climate change? How are we talking about climate change? 
in relationship to those projected impacts. So since the original happened um, over 10 years ago, uh, there has been new science and there has been new information, but there's also a wealth of uh, information to mine among you all, among our network of what are those impacts turning out to be? How are we experiencing them? And so over the course of the spring and the fall of this year, we hope to have several conversations, one of which I think we'll try to create a standing space for here. Um, and I'll get to that a little bit more later, but objective two, so the first is the projected impact. So the next slide, Ted, is objective two, which is solutions. So updating our cap in to deliver comprehensive information on solutions for building that resilience. These are these innovative solutions that frankly are already being implemented by many of you because you have no choice, right? You have to, you have to deal with the impacts that you're feeling and seeing. And we can share collective knowledge around that, but we can also um, bring digestion of resources of nature-based solutions that are out there that we um, maybe haven't brought to a, to a core sort of communication tool before. So, uh, you know, this is the fact that there are um, already many um, indigenous uh, climate action plans for our um, relatives uh, are, and they are including solutions that we maybe haven't thought about. Or there are organizations that might come to our workshops or our conversations and say, this is what we're doing. And maybe we haven't integrated those into the same conversation around it building climate resiliency for people and for nature. So that's gonna be happening, like I said, over the course of this year. Then objective three, this is kind of, I don't wanna say tie it all up in a bow, but this, this is the later stage of what we are going to do to create this co-produce inclusive resource will allow us to elevate the importance of including nature and biodiversity within climate planning processes across our region. So that means we can talk to high level decision makers. We could talk to these are examples, Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus and say, here's this um, resource we've created and we've got this all these people who are connected to it. How can you, you know, include that in those, those really shiny executive summary plans, right? Where we're pointing to resources. Um, this is something that happens after we talk to our network, after we collect information about the impacts and the solutions. This happens as we digest it. Um, so this whole this whole year is going to continue to be basically a grown zone of us finding our different ideas and our different solutions. And then we're going to be looking at what does that converge to with our objective three. So the next slide is that we need you as a part of it. So we absolutely need everyone. And there's a few different ways we envision this, but it's not exclusive. So I just want to be really clear that um, my, my email will be somewhere available to you. Please reach out to us and let us know if you want to be involved in your organization, because it's not going to be just the boxes we have here. So if you click, the first box will show up, the first part, which is, you could be a core participant of our project team, the coordinating group I talked about, where we are trying to organize the, the chaos into whether it's writing and research or whether it's a report subsection of, a, of this, this group, meaning if there are a few individuals who would take the lead on a section on education, for example, that could be part of our core project team. I've put some numbers on here that are not necessarily guaranteed, but I want to give you an idea in case you're looking to get involved that we will we meet weekly right now and and there's some work on top of that so if you want to get involved this could be what you would be com committed to doesn't have to be but this is an idea the next one ted is workshop participant so we talked i talked about having these conversations these workshops uh you could come to participate in the workshop and provide your input um into this effort with your content with your updates with your ideas with your uh, expert knowledge, because many of you have expert knowledge that is in your brain that we are trying to learn from, that we are trying to um, expand with that kind of antennae touching with other experts in our network. So this one is an estimate of a one-time cost of a maybe one-time commitment of maybe three hours for a workshop. Maybe follow-up, which is over a few weeks, you might send a survey or ask you to review the notes or something like that. So less involvement. The next one, Ted, thank you, is document reviewer. So that's stage three, that digestion, we're going to have a lot of ways we're trying to roll this up. You could be saying, 
I can't commit to, to coordinating. I can't commit to showing up to a workshop, but I'd love to help look at the level of materials you've digested to give you feedback, to give you expertise and review. Um, this is going to be, as again, I said later in this process. So I did still estimate it though as a couple hours per month and not necessarily clear now when, but variable with us asking you to turn around something within a couple of weeks. This is again, not set in stone. I just trying to set some ballpark parameters around ways you can participate. And then the final one that I've imagined at this point is our advisory group, which would be a group that we would convene. And I wrote here about three hours a month. So that's like two hours in a meeting, maybe once a month, but like one hour that you would review materials that we've sent that we want your input put on. And that's, you know, us figuring once we get to a point of ready to kind of update some individuals on the process we want to who want to advise and who want to provide us with direction uh we will be having those we don't have that group labeled right now um again this is the way i'm imagining it so if you're imagining it differently please uh reach out but uh, this is the this is the fist bump part of this picture it's like we got to bring it all together and frankly i believe that because we're all different people. We're going to have diverse perspectives that will enhance this process so much. So we need you. Um, thank you, Doug. Drop my email in the chat. And actually, you will also see another email coming out that's capping at chicagowilderness.org that I'm going to be using for communications as well. So either one, capn at chicagowilderness.org or my K Voorhees at Field Museum. So what's coming up is this our uh, first workshop of focusing on natural resource managers, April 27th in uh, Indiana Dunes National Park at the Portage Lake Front Riverwalk Pavilion. Some of you have received this invite by email. We were like blasting people who we thought we knew would want to be there, but we want to also have this here in front of you in case you think this is a workshop you'd like to join. Again, this is the first conversation of many. We will have additional workshops. I don't have a full schedule of that yet, but we do expect to have more conversations that are not necessarily just focused on one group. Um, this, this group group we're picking because we know it's about to get really busy if it's not already with field work. And we want to have a sort of kickoff conversation where you help us think through some of these, um, these objectives. And the there may also, we are also talking about a follow-up in the fall for like the same group. So we can kind of have our brains thinking about these questions over the course of the field season. Again, this is kind of building it as we go. So I wanted to make sure that you saw this, everyone here, and um, can also drop, I'm going to drop in the chat that there's a registration link for this that we'd love for you to use if you'd like to come so we can know how many people we're going to get dietary preferences. We have to get parking passes for everyone, that kind of thing. So I dropped that in the chat. At this workshop, we're going to have a couple of discussions. So they are here, but I'm actually going to move us to the next slide, Ted, where they are, I think, bigger. Uh, I left them in talcs. Sorry about that. <laughs> so this is where I stop to say, um, I want you to give me feedback, too, on what we're going to talk about there. And if you were at this meeting and you were asked to say, what is the changing climate impacts on the environment where you work? When you're going out to your sites, when you're going out uh, to do your thing, what are you seeing? Uh, how are you experiencing it? And then these other two discussions are here too for you to read, to chime in on. I'm going to stop myself though, because I could just keep talking and not have enough space for you guys to, to chime in with questions either about CAPN or to say like, yeah, I want to res respond to one of these questions uh, and, and think about how you guys are going to hold that discussion. So I'll stop there and, and open us up to, to chatting. Thanks, Kristen. That was awesome. Um, any questions for Kristen? I have one, but um, that can wait and it can be offline. Okay. Marcella has a question in chat. Let's see. Will the cabin be inclusive of communities without water bodies, significant natural areas, et cetera? Yes. I believe that in the same way that the green infrastructure vision was recast as not just those green spots, but more of like, let's change our framework and think about how everything can be green, depending on its frame, its context. We would like to do that with Kaplan as well. So we do at the Field Museum have several social scientists who are helping us think through how to go to our um, 
indigenous and tribal partners about their perspectives on this in the region. But we also have uh, social, we have people on this call, education folks who are like, we're thinking about this from the from the perspective of the education part of it. So it doesn't mean that that means those schools or those areas have land or have water or anything. It's just that we are going to have a role in this and we're trying to figure out some sort of framework to, to lay those roles out. And we're going to have to go where the momentum is. So if um, if we don't really feel like we are getting an expert or some leads in it, we may not cover some areas. I want to acknowledge that. But um, if you are excited and passionate, like, yeah, follow up with me so we can figure out how to build that out as this moves forward. I hope that answered, uh, Ms. Marcella. Any other questions on this topic? Any suggestions, any feedback for Kristen? Oh, and this is where I was supposed to say, I'm coming <laughs> back, I said, I'm coming back to it. Uh, it was proposed that this group that meets quarterly may be a space that you already come to and you don't want to go to a whole separate workshop. And so we, we maybe can use some time going forward to keep checking in with you all on what are you seeing out there? So these same questions, like, do you want to come to us and say like, hey, this is what I've been seeing. I want Kappen to be aware of it. Here's my understanding of what solutions could be, but here's just what I'm doing right now. And, you know, have dialogue here in this space. So um, that was a great suggestion from Beth and Jeremy when I talked to them last week. And I think Ted is, is supportive of that. So where there are spaces where you guys are already convening, sorry guys, for everyone here may already be convening or your other networks, let's try to leverage those. Um, and so I know this sounds like I'm saying everything everywhere all at once, which deserves all the awards it won. But it is me trying to be uh, honest, trying not to assume where we all want to operate and empower us to operate in new spaces. That's awesome. Thank you, Kristen. And I really loved your slide on the ground zone. I had not seen that before. And I think that's really helpful to convey what's going on right now. Um, all right, I'm going to switch this over to Beth and Jeremy who are gonna give us a quick update on education. Um, Beth, do you wanna take it away? Or Jeremy, do you wanna take it away? I'm not sure about Beth's connection. Jer Jeremy, I believe has a slide he wants to share. Jeremy, are you on the call? Yep. I am on the call, yes. Oh, great. You want me to you start? Want to share about the idea? Yeah, I think that probably makes sense to start out with as something that we, you know, because one of the things we're really thinking about, we've been talking about a little bit is how we're so excited about Kappen and it kind of education sort of fits into Kappen and vice versa, you know, this kind of thing. And we're really excited for all of you who are on this call. I mean, really listening to some of the stuff you're doing. We're really looking forward to sort of maybe even highlighting something each of our quarterly meetings. And so maybe this one, we start with the IDNR education stuff and we can do like another one, like, Friends of the Chicago River next time, or whatever. We can see who wants to volunteer. So yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for the other fellow presenters who got us to where we are today. Now, uh, I'm uh, fortunate and lucky to say that I'll be working with uh, our in education and engagement working group. Um, I believe awareness is critical. Exposure is critical. Where we want to expose, connect, and educate. Um, we have to be more uh, strategic and intentional in ways that we wanna connect with younger and more diverse audiences so that we can reach the next generation. Uh, we have to teach climate science in an age appropriate way. We have to be mindful of who our audiences are. And then also we wanna show that what we do is a viable career pathway so that we can recruit and retain others to kind of follow into our footsteps. Um, with our education team and IDNR and other uh, collaborators, we're gonna be working soon to develop curriculum and then align those curriculum with the next generation of science standards. Uh, I think we can't just stop at the K-12 education piece. Uh, we have to also bring college ed educators into the uh, planning as well because our college educators need curriculum. Also, uh, just a quick highlight and overview of some of the resources we at IDNR provide that's relevant to this precious subject are uh, we provide professional development for educators through our Entice program, and I'll be willing to share the links and any PDFs following. Uh, 
also open to hosting workshops focusing on these climate education subjects. Uh, we offer biodiversity field trip grants, grants for schools uh, to provide transportation to take their students uh, to these green spaces and then we can kind of tap on climate there. But again, that awareness and exposure is really uh, critical. Uh, we also have Illinois Schoolyard Habitat Action Grants where schools can apply to uh, beautify their schoolyards and their campuses. Uh, we just got through reviewing grants, uh, some really, really great ideas that kind of tapped on to recycling, uh, community urban gardening, uh, and starting installing pollinator gardens, uh, the list goes on. So again, I'd be happy to share the resources for this. And then we have uh, other supplemental resources as well, but uh, we want to come up and create a, crea cre a curriculum, again, aligned with the next generation science standards. And we can't just stop at K-12. We have to also open up the doors for college educators as well. I also, so prior to coming on board with uh, IDNR as the Director of Outreach and Community Engagement, where I report directly to the director's office, uh, I was fortunate to work with Ted for three years at Open Lands. I was the manager of education and community outreach and uh, once me and Ted left, I kind of told him, I said, it ain't no getting rid of me. And so <laughs> still uh, working together. So for those of you who might not be aware, uh, in a partnership with Healthy Schools Campaign and Open Lands, and also MWRD as a, a partner as well, uh, we were kind of working on a program called Space to Grow. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with that. But if you just look it up in, uh, online, uh, basically with that Space to Grow program, where we transform schoolyards into green spaces. Those green spaces have outdoor classrooms. Uh, they plant trees on those campus campuses. Uh, they have pollinator gardens, et cetera, et cetera. And this past year, we wrapped up the 34th schoolyard transformation campus in Chicago. So if you look online, Space to Grow Healthy, thank you uh, for dropping that, uh, Patrick. Uh, and we just completed the 34th campus. And I spoke to Meg, Ellie, who's the director of the program, and um, proud to announce that there will be an application process uh, to uh, recruit and get more campuses in that network. So again, a space to grow program. Uh, Ted, Beth, I know I was kind of trying to wrap things up pretty quickly and give a high level overview. Uh, did I miss anything? Is there anything I should elaborate on? Any questions? But yeah, we want to get a curriculum that everybody can use. Sorry, who was that speaking? Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, Ted included this NSTA resources. I don't know if you want to speak to that point on the slide here. Mm -hmm. So the NSTA resources, um, the NSTA is the National Science Teachers Association, um, and they are pretty much the leading developer of climate curriculum. Uh, and, and we're finding they're also sort of the leading watchdog on climate curriculum development. Um, I became aware of the NSTA through actually an article that I was reading either in the New York Times or the Washington Post that was talking about this comic book that was featured at the NSTA convention for curriculum. Uh, that was funded by, uh, I can't remember the organization, but it has CO2 in the name. And it is uh, basically a right wing funded group that is talking about the benefits of carbon and too much carbon. Um, so based on that, I started poking around the website. I brought this to Jeremy and Beth, and it looks like they have a, an annual uh, conference that talks about curriculum and curriculum development that um, we're gonna try to get funding to, to have them to go to since curriculum is where the energy is sort of lying right now and the opportunities are lying with IDNR because they have no climate curriculum. They have other curriculum, but not climate curriculum. And, and we'd love through Jeremy um, to see if we can change that. That may be a, a heavy lift, but uh, Jeremy seems optimistic and, and really it's in its nascent stage. So we're gonna go from there. Um, any questions about this? Um, the other discussion that I think we wanted to sort of lean into a little bit is this climate planning discussion. 
Um, Beth and Jeremy have very much been in the C4 discussions with me. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting stuff that's coming out of that in terms of ideation and brainstorming, but um, it's almost overwhelming, I think, the opportunities that are, are, are coming out of this and, and being highlighted and then that gets into capacity issues as well, right? So um, I, I think there's a role for this discussion. Kristen obviously showed that there are opportunities uh, for education in the cap end. Um, I think they're still a little ways off. They're certainly in that grown zone somewhere, but I'm not sure where in that zone we are uh, or they are. Um, the other sort of interesting dilemma and discussion here is how do we integrate traditional ecological knowledge or traditional knowledge uh, whatever you call it, um, within this industry, because, you know, we like to cite and source expertise, and there's not a whole lot of citation and sourcing of uh, generational knowledge that has pa been passed down in perhaps oral ways, right? Um, so, so, go ahead. Just Yeah, yes. I just want to make a point in this. I wanted to invite Bill Miller. We had a talk earlier this week a little bit about ways we can incorporate it and in reaching out to tribal groups. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about what we what we were discussing, Bill, just kind of bring you into the conversation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I guess it's really important, but one of the things we have to do is really, we want to do it in a very respectful way and not appropriate uh, the TEK and the traditional knowledge, but to share what tribes or communities want to share, right? So, we're still trying to figure that out. I've been working with Madeline Tudor at, at Field Museum, and she's been preparing a sort of a along the lines of what uh, Kristen presented, introducing uh, CAP into tribal communities, see how they want to get engaged. And so, you know, we're still early in that to reach out and understand the best way. And it might be a standalone workshop where they can interact with each other or it might be inviting to other workshops. We're still sorting that out. But I think it's, you know, you know, I was in a recent lecture and talking about, um, you know, the general public isn't really interested in understanding the plight of Native Americans now, but they're real happy to appropriate the, um, the uh, philosophy and the ceremonies. And so I think we want to do it in a way where we're incorporating the aspects that people want to share and figuring out how to do that. So we're still relatively early in that stage, but um, I think there's going to be a lot of potential. And I think it would be from, you know, it could be urban communities as well as tribal communities. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And so it's certainly something we want to figure out the best way to incorporate. And I know, you know, Kristen's very interested in doing that as well. So, um, yeah, I think, um, I guess that's where I, I am now, Beth, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and back to like trying to figure out how this integrates together. Some of what seems to be happening is maybe at our client meetings, there's an opportunity for us to share individual projects like the TK or TK or IDNR or other groups that are on here. There can be some space to share about what's happening. And then maybe from what I can understand, Kristen's open and Kappen's open to how does this kind of stuff maybe eventually fit in Kappen? You know, does it fit within an education chapter? Does it fit in a solutions place or does it, you know, but having this time to dialogue within the climate meeting, even if it's just brief, might be a place where we sort of identify these interesting either solutions or education pieces or conference, or whatever, that things that are coming up that we could be part of. So that answers the where is the energy surrounding in terms of where is the energy surrounding education. That's what I'm sort of sensing, but I don't know what other people feel on the call whether they'd be willing to share uh, more specifically about their stuff on a future call. Yeah, we have some time for questions and discussion mm -hmm. if if people want to talk a little bit more about this for five minutes. And Jeremy, I see your hand, so mm -hmm. maybe you have an observation. Yeah. Go ahead. There was a question that came in the chat. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask the chat and present it. Oh, but nice. About the MWRD uh, and its role with like Space to Grow. And the question was asked, has the Space to Grow program expanded beyond Chicago? Not that I am aware of. And yes, you are correct that there's communities that are more prone to flooding. And so schools within those communities 
I understand are are invited to apply. Um, uh, I think that's all I know of that, but I'm more than happy to put whomever in contact with the director of the program, Meg Kelly, uh, just to make sure that I answer all those related questions uh, appropriately. So hope that was somewhat helpful to the question that was asked, but it, it is a model program. I think that um, every city, every state should have one if funds are available. Those transformation of those school yards can be quite costly. So we rely heavily on donors and capital partners to kind of help fund those. And on average, there's like four to five uh, campuses that are, are, are redesigned each year. So hope that was somewhat helpful to the question that was asked in the chat. Sure. And, and then and I'll, just I'll jump in on that one too. We, the MWD is currently looking at a pilot program or so that we'd, we'd kind of offer a similar program in the suburbs. We've, uh, we've actually selected four school districts, but right now we're still at the pilot stage. We're trying to get another uh, partner, or maybe two more partners to help fund and do some of the on the ground work that Jeremy has been leading the last few years, but it's a great program. We've got 34 schools. We've taken old asphalt lots and just transformed them to these vibrant places that are permeable that can take on, I think we're up to about 6.5 million gallons of water every rain event. So it's, these are really resilient and uh, really an opportunity to inform the future, our future leaders about the power of green infrastructure. So thanks for bringing up that program, Jeremy. Sure. Thank you, Pat. That's really helpful. Um, any Can other have... questions, comments? Go ahead, Beth. I have a question for Pat. I wonder, do you have a PDF or any kind of document that you'd be willing to share that describes this program that we could, going to this Connecting People resources, we're starting to find that certain groups like C4 has a guidebook, GRC has a framework. Is there something that MWRD might be willing to share, even just a summary of what you just shared? That we could post in the sure sure I, you're looking for this new program that we have we haven't really got it going yet but i could give you any information and uh that would um, be great and yeah i put a link to space to grow in the chat so there's, there's you, a ton oh, of the space to grow stuff okay. on, on space to grow space okay. grows really strictly with cps but um okay. yeah we're trying to get it out to some other school districts out in the southwest and north, northwest suburbs displaying summit um uh, burnham been chosen already but we need, still need that partner so if anybody knows anyone uh it's a great opportunity to uh really promote and spread green infrastructure throughout the county and in my opinion um it's sort of the way that we need to be thinking about design and construction moving forward um and it's great and it's a great ass uh example of that go ahead bill so I guess um, I'm also working with a group evaluating sort of a similar program, the Garfield Park Eco Orchard, uh, that's together with MWRD in the city of Chicago, which is sort of a similar catching a lot of rainwater underground as well. So, I mean, there, there are opportunities, I think, beyond the schools, right, Patrick? So I think that you know, some of those others can be a little tricky with the city and MWRD having dueling legal departments, but hopefully things are, you know, things are still moving along well there. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be out this, this spring, but it's again, a neighborhood group wanting to have access to, you know, fruits and vegetables, fruits and nuts to go along with say community gardens and an area that's flooded. And so, you know, those kind of partnerships don't have to just be schools. Um, one quick thing before I go on to the last slide that I have, which is really just a wrap up slide. Um, Beth and Jeremy and I, at, at a minimum, um, meet every week or two in a flexible sort of way. Uh, anybody that's interested in that, just quickly raise your, your chat hand um, so that we can get an idea if we want to open this group up or keep it small. Um, go ahead and do that now. Please, if you're interested in joining these meetings or help helping us with this. Um, otherwise, I will go to the next slide. So thank you. Uh, here's just a, a quick summary of the next opportunities. We have climate leadership meetings, um, sort of in the two months in between, those are open to anybody. Um, 
And then the quarterly meetings, uh, our next one is uh, July 14th, and then uh, I believe October 13th. Um, all of these are the second Fridays of the month at this time. Uh, I gave you the cafes that, that we were looking at um, earlier, but this is that list again. And then there are a couple of community uh, meetings and forums that, that might be helpful to have on your radar. One is the, the Midwest Climate Collaborative one. If you're interested in that research work, that happens every Wednesday at 11. And I can get you linked in with uh, Abigail, who is that nice woman on that photo, um, and introduce you to her if you're interested in that. Uh, the C4 meetings, uh, I think the next one is in May. Uh, so if you're interested in participating in that in a deeper way, uh, we can certainly connect you to that. And then uh, as part of this, there's the Greentown Climate and Equity Symposium coming up in June 22nd. Uh, and I don't, I think that's historically in Oak Park, but I think it's a little in a different uh, location this year, but that link uh, takes you to that website and, and gives you further details of, of that, that organization's um, programming for that day. If I've missed anything, please let me know. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list by any a stretch. This is sort of what I have on our radar for um, climate uh, and climate related things. Uh, so with that, I think I will thank you for your time today and uh, any last questions. If not, you can uh, go and have a great weekend. <laughs> Joining us. Thank you, Kristen, Beth, right. Jeremy. Thank you. Way to go. To and thank you, Patrick, Everybody. for coming and, and giving your your examples you, and everybody else for coming. Have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Have a good weekend. So, would someone going to capture?